Okay, in this video here, I just want to go through machining this area here. So it's like an internal pocket as opposed to being an open pocket or core milling. So I'm going to go back to my tool paths and I'm going to select area mill. The machining region, I'm going to select and again, make sure I'm picking 3D and just picking a face. So that's the area that I want to machine. The machining region strategy now, in this case, I don't want to go from the outside. I actually want to stay inside, okay? And with this strategy then, I don't need an avoidance region, okay? So I can just have a machining region. So the tool that I'm going to use is the same 12 millimeter tool. So the speeds and feeds are the, are the same. And I'm going to put in a comment, rough internal pocket. Okay, cut parameters then. So again, I'm just going to increase the step over here slightly because it's, this is quite a shallow pocket. So I'm going to say that the minimum depth of cut now is going to be 3.5 millimeters and the maximum depth of cut is going to be five. Um, so I'm cutting around 41%, 42% of the cutter. Linking parameters, the depth is again set to Z incrementally zero from the surface that I've picked. The top of the stock, in this case I'm going to pick here, is actually now the top of the solid model. The feed plane is, I'll put two millimeters incrementally above the top of the stock and the retract plane is set to six, absolute. We can see that trachoidal is already on. We've got a nice step over. Um, but I'm just looking at my entry motion in here. So if I was to look at the front of the model, and if I went to my view and show the model in wireframe, uh, it looks, it appears that I'm doing some class of a ramp going down here to get down to depth. Um, so I want to change that to a helical entry. So that's in under transitions. So I, my entry method is a helical entry. The radius that I want to be on my helix is four millimeters. Um, I have a 12 mil cutter. Uh, the entry feed rate is either I can select it at the plunge rate or the feed rate. So if I looked at the tool, it'll either be at 300 millimeters a minute or 1,782 millimeters per minute. So I'm going to go back to my transitions and say that I want to enter at the feed rate. The Z clearance, and again, you can see here, this is going to be a clearance above the top of the stock where the helix will commence. So I'll put that in as one. The plunge angle I'm going to put in at five degrees, and I'm just going to leave the profile length and skip pockets at the moment just set to zero. The green tick and regenerate now. So what's happening here then is that uh, if I was to zoom up on here, uh, hopefully you can see the green line here. If you look at my Y value down here, the Y value is set more or less to zero. If I move my mouse to here, you can see that it's roughly at about one mil. So that's where the helix is starting. And here we're two millimeters above the top. So my feed plane is two millimeters. I'm going to feed down and then essentially come in at on my helix. Okay, let's just go to an isometric view again. And I'll turn my shading back on. One of the disadvantages of using trachoidal is the fact that it will impact on your surface finish. We can change uh, from a standard area toolpath, okay, to a dynamic toolpath. And again, the difference between the two toolpaths. So if I was to regenerate that first of all, so you can see the different motion that this toolpath has, this dynamic motion. One of the advantages of dynamic is that when I look at my cut parameters, is that I have this idea of a micro lift. When it's retracting back, it lifts off the surface, the machining surface, by 0.25 of a millimeter. Uh, I'm going to increase my back feed rate there to 3,500. The advantage here is that we reduce heat. We're not rubbing on the actual part. Now, the one problem that I have at the moment now is that if I go to my home, I'm using a 12 millimeter cutter, but if you see on here, so I'm going to go analyze entities and just say, I'm going to select an edge selection. 
okay um, and now I'm selecting or analyzing that edge and you can see that the radius value here is 5 so obviously going in here with a 12 mil cutter I'm going to leave a, a bit of material on the inside of this okay so what I want to do is I want to create a another toolpath with a smaller cutter so I'm using the 12 mil cutter to remove as much material as possible and now I'm going to bring in a 6 mil cutter and try and pick out these corners so I'm going to again copy this operation so let's right click drag release and say copy after I'm going to go to the parameters and I'm going to change the tool so I'm going to use our six millimeter tool okay if I was to accept that and regenerate you can see that I am machining the whole surface again just to take out these regions on here what I want to show you here now is that in under stock I can use what's called rest machining or rest material and I'm going to base this rest material on all previous operations or one other operation so I'm going to base this on one other operation and the operation that I'm going to base it on is this one to rough the internal pockets okay now if I was to regenerate that you can see that now all that we're doing is that we're actually picking out these areas uh, where that material was left by the 12 millimeter cutter. So obviously much, much more efficient. Okay.